This is especially for women who are new to the watch world and just don't quite understand the technicalities of a watch or just want to learn more about the watch language. I was there at one point, as we all were, and I remember it being super confusing. Hi guys, it's Beth. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to break down some of the most important watch terms you should know before you buy a watch and explain terms every watch lover should know. This is especially for women who are new to the watch world and just don't quite understand the technicalities of a watch or just want to learn more about the watch language. I was there at one point, as we all were, and I remember it being super confusing. So hopefully this video will explain and break down some of those terms a bit better before you buy a new watch or if you just want to understand your timepiece a little more. Everyone's new to something at one point and it really is just about sharing information, so let's get started. I'm using my Rolex Pepsi as a model for today. First and foremost, when it comes to watches, there are two types. Quartz, which uses a piece of quartz and a battery to power the watch, and mechanical, which uses a spring to power the watch via hand winding and kinetic energy generated by your wrist movement. Each have their pros and cons, and most luxury watches tend to be mechanical nowadays, but generally, quartz watches have better accuracy with the con of being battery powered, versus mechanical, which can continuously run given kinetic energy and winding. Then there's Grand Seiko who brilliantly created the spring drive that combines the lasting motive force of a manual watch with the high precision of a quartz watch. But more on that another time, let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a video on Grand Seiko. Then within mechanical watches, there's manual watches and automatic watches. Most of the watches in my collection are automatic, except some of my Omegas. Manual watches have to be hand wound manually each time you put on the watch. The mainspring, which powers the watch, must be tightly wound by hand each time to release tension and energy to power the watch. As the spring gets slowly unwound over time throughout the day, it must be wound again, hence the manual. The pro is that manual watches allow for a thinner case, and hence a thinner watch. Automatic watches are self-winding and really only require you to put on the watch to start running with just a bit of kinetic energy from the movement on your wrist. Once the power reserve is out, you do have to wind an automatic watch a bit and make sure you generate a bit of kinetic energy to ensure the watch is running, but not nearly as much as you would fully and continuously daily wind a manual watch. Speaking of which, power reserve is the amount of time a watch can run once it's fully wound or the maximum amount of time a watch will run if it's not wound or worn. This can go upwards of 40 hours, where this Pepsi has an approximately 70 hour power reserve. The case is the bulk of a watch. It can be different materials from stainless steel to gold and houses the dial, movement, and other internal parts. It's the part that determines the size of a watch and can vary in size in diameters and millimeters. This Pepsi has a case diameter of 40 millimeters. The crystal is the clear protective cover that encompasses the watch face and is often made of sapphire, plastic, or glass. The bezel is the metal or even ceramic ring that surrounds the watch crystal. Bezels can either be purely decorative, like on an AP Royal Oak, or fully functional, like on this Rolex GMT. This bezel fully rotates to help you tell a second time zone, which I mentioned and showed you guys in my last video. The dial is the watch face and, well, serves the true purpose of a watch, displaying the time. Some dials can be simple and just have numerals or indices and hands, and other complicated watches can have more on the dial, such as the date or subdials. Having a date on a watch is considered a complication, where a complication is any function on a watch that goes beyond telling the time. Having a date, a chronometer, a GMT, a moon phase, perpetual calendar, and so on are examples of complications. This Pepsi has two complications, being the date and the GMT function. Additionally, something unique to Rolex is the Cyclops, which is the sapphire bubble fixed to the crystal to magnify the date. Subdials are smaller dials on a watch face that can show you different things such as the date, elapsed time, or power reserve. Moving on from the case, we have the bracelet, which is pretty self-explanatory, but watches can either have bracelets which are metal or gold, or straps, which are leather or fabric. 
You guys know I'm much more of a bracelet gal, but using watch straps can be a fun way to change up the look and aesthetic of a watch easily. It's also an easy and quick way to share watches between partners by just switching the bracelet and strap out without having to resize the bracelet. This Pepsi has a Jubilee bracelet, which is actually my personal favorite. I love the flexibility as well as the feminine and elegant look of it over the Oyster bracelet. The watch case is connected to the bracelet or strap via the lugs. Metal or gold bracelets contain a clasp, which is the part of the bracelet that lets you secure and tighten the watch on your wrist. Furthermore, the case contains the crown on the side, which you use to set the hands on a watch or even further, the day and date. Hand winding a watch for many people is the most soothing and pleasing part of owning a watch and actually why some people prefer and don't mind the winding on a manual watch. The crown also allows you to power the mainspring of the watch via winding. Some watches contain crown guards that help protect the crown. Additionally, chronographs, which are tool watches with the complication to measure speed, have push pieces surrounding the crown, one to start and stop the mechanism and one to reset. Lastly, the case back is the backside of a watch that houses the movement, the true essence of a watch. The movement of a watch, put in short, is the technology behind it, the inner working mechanism of it. Watch manufacturers often use the term caliber synonymously with movement to describe the specific model name for a movement. This Pepsi, for example, uses a caliber 3285 in terms of movement. And that's all. If you're new to the watch world, it can seem overwhelming and a bit confusing, but we were all there at one point. Whether you're a woman new to horology and looking to own a nice watch, or someone who just wants to learn more about timepieces, it's just a language. And once you get more familiar with it and get the hang of the terms, everything and everyone's conversations become easier to understand. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you liked it, give it a cute little thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to see more. Follow me on my Insta for all updates and I'll see you guys soon.